We're here on deck of Tara, where we've just deployed a rosette. We're currently in Namibia. We're expecting some upwelling at the station because we've seen that the temperature has dropped from 20 degrees offshore to about 10 or 11 degrees inshore. And this tells us we're fairly certain this means that the deep bottom waters are up to us. We've just recovered the rosette from the water. We've collected water at various depths down to 40 meters. Um, so the bottles are closed, uh, where the scientists are about to start sampling uh, the water from the Niskins. Here in Namibia, we get consistent winds. So you get consistent upwelling. You get a lot more nutrients to the surface, but a very mixed water column, which is what we're seeing right now. So this leg is focusing on the Bengala upwelling system. This is one of the strongest upwelling regions in the world. So an upwelling is when you've got the winds coming from the right directions. It's pushing the surface waters away and allowing for deep, nutrient-rich waters to come to the surface. We must study upwellings because they produce a huge percentage of, of life in the ocean. This is because of the high nutrients at the surface that creates phytoplankton blooms that creates the base of the food chain. And they're just, just here, really close. I've never I've seen never one. One. These large algae populations, which are great and they create life, they eventually die. And when they die, the bacteria, so the microbiome in the water column, will suck the oxygen out of the water as they're recycling and breaking down these blooms. Um, this is concerning for us because they are also known to create greenhouse gases such as nitrous oxide, which is about 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So we need to know what they're doing in order to use models to predict how this will affect our atmosphere in the future. When we consider upwellings and its influence on people specifically in South Africa, um, it's very important because it produces a lot of productivity which feeds many of the fish uh, that are good for our commercial industries as well as small fishing towns along the coastline of the eastern boundary of South Africa. So understanding upwelling is very important to ensure that we have a healthy ecosystem and that any sort of future climate change or eutrophication that happens from the land to the sea doesn't negatively affect these industries. Oh, little shrimp. <laughs> so cute. This is things that we typically, as microbiologists, do not see. I'm enjoying this right now, seeing what some macro-sized organisms are in the water and they eat the small stuff that we're studying. It's still important to see what's there. A glass of seawater is invisible to the naked eye, but you put it under a microscope and there's a whole life, there's a whole world happening um, that we wouldn't normally see. And Tara is great for that because we're not just looking at the viruses, we're looking at everything else. We're looking at the bacteria, at the small crustaceans, we're looking at jellyfish, and these are all connected. And each size fraction is a bit like a piece of a puzzle. And the more pieces of a puzzle that we have, the better picture that we have of what's going on in the ecosystem. So you must keep sampling.